Hey everybody, this is Raphael from AAPI GoCast. I just wanted to take a moment before this week's episode to share some very sad news. So many of you know about the FGC-9. I certainly won't shut up about it. It's a uh, 3D printed firearm. It's a carbine made with no regulated firearms parts. It's a brilliant piece of engineering, fantastic work, and it was all done by, well, mostly done by one guy named Jacob, who many of us until very recently knew as Jay Stark. Last week, we got news that he had passed away this June after being raided by the German police, who were very, very upset about, you know, him exercising fundamental human freedoms. He had a weak heart. Um, He wasn't directly murdered, as far as we can tell, but this is still horrifying. I'd like to take a moment to thank him for everything he did and assure him, wherever he is, that his work will carry on. Can't stop the signal. Hello, and welcome to the August, uh, October 14th edition of the AAPI GoCast. Um, I'm your host, Scott, and uh, joining me this week and every week, we have Eugene. Hello. And Raphael. Hi. All right. So, yep, um, just us against this week, but we should have a couple of exciting guests coming up here in the near future. Um, so look out, be on the lookout for that. Um but yeah, a lot of exciting news content to go through this week, including the NRA annual board meeting and uh, some other uh, cool stuff in the world of guns. But uh, before we get into that, uh, you know, Eugene, Raphael, have you been to, been to the range lately uh, slash other than working at the range, <laughs> Eugene? <laughs> uh, so unfortunately, I really haven't gotten a lot of trigger time uh, within the past week. This past weekend was pretty intense and we didn't really get much breathing room but uh i am excited i sent in my cz p07 slide to jaeger works all the way back in july and i finally got the notification that's coming back and i should have it by monday so i'm excited to run a few drills and get back to shooting that uh fun little piece nice what did you have done to it uh got it seracoded and had a optics cut done so we're going to be putting... Very nice. How much did that run you? So I've been looking at this PO7 for a while. if you do like just a solid color Cerakote plus the optics cut, it's usually around like 2 210. But their 4th of July sale knocked it down to 140. That is fantastic. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. So I am... Ah, should have been on the lookout me... for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm excited to get that back. I haven't entirely decided what optic I'm going to put on it. Um, I'm in between either the Aimpoint Acro or a Hollow Sun 508, but I don't have experience. I mean, Hollow Sun is kind of the standard at this yeah. point. Yeah. Um, I've enjoyed every one I've tried. Uh, in general, I find them to be very comfortable, even though I think pistol sights are better than red dots. Yeah. Because I'm a FUD. <laughs> Well, I mean, at least there's not as much controversy on the optics side of it uh, compared to Olight and uh, flashlights. I mean, a uh, a red dot on a PO7 is pretty much as John Wick as you can get, so there's that. Yeah, and nice. the PO7 is uh, eventually going to become my new uh, EDC, so I want to get as proficient with it as I can. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, you're not going to have any problems. The CZs are oh, wonderful yeah. guns. If only we could all have them. Well, in, in case you want to see uh, why you should send your gun to Jaeger Works and not a crappy place, um, don't know if you can see this, but uh, this is what you get if you just send it to a random uh, place claiming to be able to do Cerakote well on Instagram. Uh, basically a piece of shit. Uh, but night and day difference when I went to uh, Sagisi Customs here in um, you know, the Bay Area, they basically able, were able to take it from that to this. Um, so much much happier but overall yeah spend good money on good uh companies to modify your glock don't uh don't live by my example i'm just kind of cackling over here because why would you modify your gun or make your gun look better when you could just get another gun (laughs) well they were offering a deal of like doing seracote for 50 bucks so i'm like oh sure why not but yeah you kind of get what you pay for that is yeah no just no, no don't modify your guns just get more guns yeah 
the only answer. Listen, the day... Especially when they use, like, whiteout for camo. The day that CZ releases yeah. an optics-ready uh, PO7 or PO9, I am snatching it out. Isn't the new Kimber, the Mako, or whatever it's called, um, pretty much, you know, what what CZ would make? Yeah, but, you know, I want to I wanna make sure that I have the CZ roll mark. That's fair. I do. I do really like CZ. I, 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 I can't lie. They're great. All right. <clears throat> yeah. No. But uh, no trigger time for me this week. Uh, I'm still stocking up on ammo though, which is really nice. I'm gonna go through it all in one one run to the range though, and I don't want to yet. So. Yeah. I mean, pretty much if you uh, get to Tennessee and uh, shoot any like you know full auto nine millimeter, or I'll be gone and like. 30 seconds. Yeah. You know, my range has a full auto 9 but they won't let me shoot it unless I have subs in it, which is sad, but I understand. It's, uh, I think, an MP7. Gotcha. Well, beyond what have you been shooting, what have you been drinking there? I'm uh, noticing a tasty beverage. Uh, this is apple juice. <laughs> ah. This is not apple juice. This is a full blown, uh, you know, margarita with a uh, Cazadores tequila in there. And uh, like moms demand action, enjoy a good rim job. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, yeah. apple, juice, apple juice makes you have more vivid dreams at night. And uh, I don't want any more apple juice. <laughs> no, no. Why would you after that? <laughs> okay, podcast over. Uh, <laughs> All right, we, we, we've won. We, we're, we can go home now. <laughs> we can go home now. Uh, well, that's that, that. We're setting new highs and new lows at the same time. This is fantastic. Exactly. Oh, uh, man. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, for me, like, I haven't really been shooting anything, but I did finally get my uh, California compliant uh, PS90 in. So uh, ha- have that to show off here. This is, you know, look how they butchered my boy. Basically, you have to have a fully welded muzzle, uh, you know, fake suppressor device, here, yeah. muscle device, and has to be 30 inches in length, and then have these little plugs here for the grip, and then also the stock is, like, totally uh, totally fixed and welded into place. But overall, it doesn't look terrible. Um, at least I don't think so. Have you shot it yet? I have not shot it yet because I can't find anywhere that uh, sells, uh, you know, 5.62 quite yet. I, I've been looking on Ammo Seek, though. Um, yeah, just, good luck. It's going to be two bucks around. Yeah, it, it was about like 250 around, actually, last Jesus. time I checked. But uh, That's yeah. horrifying. It gets to like 99 cents around. It's probably more also, reasonable. Also, uh, but... be yeah. mindful of what loads you shoot out of it. I know that with a chopped barrel the ps90 gets a lot more finicky with the ammo that it eats i don't know if the uh pinned muzzle device the fixed pressure you have on there uh gives it enough it's essentially yeah, a enough trim. like increasing yeah. time to to cycle that bolt so i just you know just run a few tests before you like commit to bulk buying yeah, yeah for sure find find the highest grain ammo you can do that first Words to live by. That way yeah, the bullet, the bullet will spend more time in the barrel and give the gases more time to blow the bolt back. Yeah, good, good call on that one. I don't know. I'd like, I might like try to like find. I don't know. Just like take it over and visit Nevada or something like that. A range that actually has it in stock. Um, you know, so I can Nevada, test it out. You'll get laughed out of town. Probably. A, that is, that is a saddened version of the PS90. Yes, it is. Not that it the is. PS90 isn't already a saddened version. I mean. That that's it's horrible what they did to that. Oh, the days like when the NFA are no <laughs> longer lords over our heads. Well, there's a big Supreme Court case coming up that's not related to the NFA, but it might give us kind of a preview into the current court's attitude because this is the first gun case in well, first major gun case in over ten years. Um, but yeah. We're very, very excited about that out here in New York land because we might actually be able to carry guns with reasonable efficacy and expeditiousness in 
I can't think of an um, uh, I can't think of any more alliterative adjectives. So uh, pretty soon. Yeah, I mean, I believe it's coming up on November third um, in DC. So uh, you know, if anyone has a press pass uh, to go sit on the Supreme Court, uh, we would love to hear from you. Uh, be interesting to attend that. That's right. All right. And we are into news for the week, which we have some more obscure pieces for you this week. Um, yeah. So starting off with the Fuddy Daddies, uh, the NRA had its annual board meeting and stuck with CEO Wayne LaPierre, who is, a, he's kind of corrupt, but he also uh, wrote the book that formed my opinions on guns which are which is Gr guns crimes and freedom i read it when i was 12 and it ta taught me what ruby ridge was and what waco was and i was like oh this is not good so mixed feelings on that yeah old wayne's been there for a while now i mean i i sort of grew up remembering thinking it was just slightly cool that charlton heston was the president of the nra <laughs> but uh I think he retired uh, slash died, like, what, 10 years ago now? <laughs> um, forgive me if Charlton Heston is still actually alive, but I thought that he had, had passed at some point here. Yeah, I... <sighs> it, it just, I think, I feel like he would have had, would have been a better meme factory if he had lived into the era of social media. I mean, it's like, just insert Charlton Heston movie line in to anything mm -hmm. gun related and it pretty much works I, i'm, I'm gonna hold my tongue uh on my feelings towards it all i will say is that the nra is like a burning building right now and they had the opportunity to put the fire out and instead of turning on the water valve they have opened up the gas valve oops yeah uh, maybe they shouldn't be colorblind <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Well, moving on then in terms of colorblind I people. I want to... Oh, I, I messed up the segue. You uh, messed up... Not... Okay, uh, proceed. Okay, I'll bring it back to colorblind, I promise. Okay. Um, but is it just a requirement that NRA presidents have um, awesome names? Like Wayne LaPierre, Charlton Heston. I mean, these are just characters out of a Wild West sitcom, but a good one. Yeah, well, and quite and, literally. Uh, but they're both West colorblind because they're men who are more likely to be colorblind. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Yep. And and plus, uh, you know, get your damn hands Although, off me, your damn dirty ape. You know, just uh, that the, all works. Uh, the NRA does not have a history of being colorblind, unfortunately. So, <laughs> back to you, Scott. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, but gone are the days when Slaylink Green was made of people and, uh, you know, you blew it all up, didn't you? Sorry, insert Planet of the Apes reference here. Um, but uh, speaking of things blowing up in the legal world, um, California State Attorney General Rob Bonta actually joined our wonderful District Attorney Chesa Bowden of San Francisco um, in his lawsuit against several ghost gun manufacturers. Um, so basically, essentially... The rationale behind this was that a federal report said there were around 65% of all ghost guns uh, recovered in the entire country were in California. Um, and so in August, uh, Chesa Bowden launched a uh, lawsuit against um, Blackhawk Manufacturing, NDX Corp, and uh, GS Performance. And, uh, you know, that hasn't really gone anywhere. It's kind of working its way through the system. Uh, but uh, officially, the state of California has joined on to that lawsuit. Oh boy. Um, so I, I, I will say it does not surprise me. Uh, on one hand, it's you know, unfortunate that it's California. You know, it, it, that was going to happen. Um, what I am surprised about, though, are the companies that they're going after. Yeah. I honestly like had only heard mm. of one of them. Seems like kind of random. <laughs> um, to to kind of create a, a small tangent on the side, uh, in related to, to ghost guns, uh, GOA and FPC actually just got a major victory in Philadelphia, uh, reversing the kind of ban on homemade firearms, which was pretty big. Um, coincidentally, 
right before that news came out, uh, the PA attorney general uh, announced his candidacy for the governor's race. And this is the same attorney general that spearheaded the ghost gun hunt, if you would. So interesting to see, interested to see how that plays out, especially with this new California lawsuit in place, if he's going to be using that as, as fuel for his propaganda fire. Nice. I mean, does he just? That's. I, I. I'm surprised that no one has like gone through the cheesy, uh, you know, thing of calling Ghostbusters or anything like that. I'm kind of disappointed they haven't worked that into the conversation. Yeah. Um. I mean, as you saw in the little message that I have here to record at the beginning of this episode, um, ghost guns have become more political worldwide and it looks like the european problem is extending to california uh, in that they're literally unregulatable uh and we're seeing that take effect as our dear friend was so fond of saying uh gun control is obsolete and uh, it looks like california is fucking around to finding out basically so cheers yeah exactly well, I mean, it, it is interesting, though, like they have cited some stats about uh, the number of gun ghost guns being confiscated at, in, during crime scenes uh, being up by about like 35 percent. So I don't know. It's relative, though. It's uh, kind of hard to tell, like how much of a problem it really is or if it's just not a problem at all, uh, given California. I think they're probably lowering gun thefts. And uh, people who would deal arms in the black market are simply building goes are building eighty percent instead of uh, stealing them out of people's cars like they used to. So it's just uh, localizing the supply chain a little bit more, um, making it slightly more inter fragile. I don't see much. I don't. I don't foresee much of a change in uh, you know the people who would commit crimes anyway. Just maybe the timeline of them doing that. Yeah, exactly. Okay, well, um, yep. I was going to try to come up with the segue, but this next one is just Um, too good. So, so, yeah, speaking (laughs) of of things happening in Europe, um, we (laughs) unfortunately had a, there was an incident in Norway uh, a few days ago. Uh, Several people were killed by a man with a bow and arrow. In uh, Oslo, in uh... regulate high capacity <laughs> quivers, ban no. assault bows, exactly. you know, etc. Um, those those weird bows with the funky yeah, things the, uh, that shoulder go thing out. that goes up. Um, yeah, I guess mm-hmm. Legolas <laughs> has to start registering his hands as deadly weapons. The uh, Shire is about to become a lot more strict. Uh, <laughs> so because of this. Uh, Usually, uh, a lot of European police forces uh, don't have their their standard uh, patrol officers armed. However, after this incident, Norway is now ordering their usually unarmed police to carry guns, uh, partly in response to this and partly in preparation for any future attacks that that might occur. Um, Yeah. Some details on this case. It was apparently related to Islamic extremism. Um, the attack itself was, uh, under unusual circumstances. So he actually, uh, faced off with police who were not armed at the time. So he was just there in the middle of the street, threatening cops with a bow and arrows while they just kind of waved at him and told him to stop. So what, his victims were the, the cops that he shot with the bow? No, they were... Yeah. No, he didn't shoot any yeah. cops, okay. as far as I can tell. It's just the cops oh, couldn't okay. do anything at all. Yeah. Oh. That makes sense. Yeah, well... so there's, there's, there's conflicting reports over whether or not he used a crossbow. Um, but it was in a, in a store. So, I... I don't know. This doesn't seem like a very Norwegian thing to do. Yeah. It, it, definitely within the past few years, uh, norms have been breaking. And not in the best ways. I think 
I think that's mm-hmm. true worldwide, and uh, it's somewhat sad, but you know, it's the world we live in. Yeah. Well, I mean, plus it's it's you know, I mean, across the board in Europe, you have strict gun laws, but uh, somehow guns are getting in and bow and arrows and everything like that. So, just kind of goes to show you, there's really no way to stop crazy from being Let's crazy. Not forget about uh, explosives as well. Uh, quite a few instances of of grenade attacks. Yep. Or, yeah, uh, thermite's really easy to make. Um, as Mythbuster said, you mix some of this blur with some of this blur, and then you put some of this blur on it to ignite it. Yeah. Where there's a will, there's unfortunately always a will. <laughs> I'm not... Yeah. This is yeah. a Brandon Herrera video after, I think, the Florida shooting a while back, where he was like, you know, we should be really glad these people are using guns and haven't figured out that chemical weapons work better yet. Yeah, the... Oh, I know, that, like... Every... Every time I hear about, like, East London, it just sounds, like, nightmarish. It's like you're either going to get stabbed or acid thrown in your face. And it's like, I don't know about you, but if it, if it came down to me meeting, like, Harvey Dent slash Two-Face for life, I would rather be shot. <laughs> yeah, like, please shoot me with a crappy twenty two your uncle gave you. I don't really want Or a recreation of, of the 1995 Tokyo sarin attack. Oh, God. I also yeah, don't that... want to get run over by a truck. Like, that <laughs> doesn't sound fun. Not at all. Well, it's interesting, though. Like, the, if you've ever been to Tokyo, like, they don't have garbage mm-hmm. cans in public anymore uh, because of the sarin attack. So, like, literally, if you have something to throw away, like bottled water, you have to carry it around with you all day until you can, like, get back to your hotel slash home to actually throw it away because that was, like, the dispersion mechanism, I guess, during that attack was... Yeah, they would throw it into cans, to cans and, around the and, uh, uh, subway vents. station. That's an intelligent way to do it. Um, still disgusting, but huh, clever. All, All right. right. Uh, National Review has been on a. I missed the segue again. Okay, National Review, who tends to be on our side of the uh, gun aisle, uh, they've been on a on a tear lately, and this actually. Um, we talked with a reporter recently, and I hit him with some statistics, and this kind of ties into that, and I feel. I feel proud of myself for making the same argument. Um, But basically, it's just an overview of how gun control laws failing to be enforced fails to prevent crimes. Because many of the national gun laws we have in place, minus the NFA and Gun Control Act of 1968 or 1967 and, you know, the NFA expansion in 1986, minus those, we have some good laws. And... uh, it's just a, basically a summary of how straw buyers, uh, people failing background checks repeatedly and knowingly lying on those background checks and then failing to be prosecuted, <clears throat> and guns sold in retail transactions that, uh, you know, dropped that, that, that were let go because they took too long and then came back failed. If we removed those, we'd cut gun crime severely. But no, the ATF couldn't be bothered to do their jobs and instead i'm going to give you a little uh sneak peek here they're too busy wasting money paying their desk uh, desk workers like their uh field agents yeah exactly i mean and it's just uh i mean case in point sam licardo's proposals to uh you know add video surveillance uh to combat straw purses ostensibly seems like a completely backwards way of doing that when the ATF itself isn't even bothering to follow up on uh, you know actual leads against people who shouldn't own guns that all the red flags are there um, to coin a phrase yeah absolutely and I mean National Review tends to be tends to be pretty solid on this issue Um, yeah but uh, like I, I was uh, when we were talking with uh, our friend, our, our, our local friend for you, um, I pointed out that restricting concealed carry to may issue instead of shall issue is in no way related to public safety, except perhaps by preventing public safety. Yeah, exactly. Concealed carry permit holders are incredibly unlikely to commit a crime. And if you're denying them the means for self-defense when they're a lower risk than the actual peacekeeping force, uh, you, you're you not 
concerned for the public safety, you have an agenda. And I think that's the same thing we can point out here is that, you know, if we actually cared, we'd be doing these things. But no, we have an agenda. So we're not. And that's that's really all there is to it. Yep. Now, speaking of uh, things that blow other than Shannon Watts, um, a whistleblower, uh, the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco and Firearms, um, they basically claim that uh, a lot of administrative jobs are being paid bonuses um, that should be reserved for criminal investigations. Um, so according to the the leak, uh, this is on NPR, um, it's essentially a special bonus known as law enforcement availability pay or LEAP. And um, a majority of people getting that apparently did not qualify for it. Um, so essentially your taxpayer dollars are going to pad out at least 25% of uh random uh, bureaucrat salary at the ATF. Yeah, and the guy who reported this got fired. Uh, his performance mysteriously tanked right after this. Um, my favorite Twitter comment on the article by NPR was uh, somebody who'd obviously never heard of the ATF. And they were saying, wow, this department must have a lot of Republicans in it. <laughs> Funniest shit I've what? seen all week. Oh my God. Yep. <laughs> It was, that. uh, that, that made my day. It was beautiful. Yeah. Um, yeah. But basically ATF is corrupt. Who knew? Wow. My, my mind is blown. I, I literally century. can't believe this. This, this is absurd. A government agency, much less one that regulates, you know, very important items being corrupt. Wow. <laughs> Too much. I know. It's like, I mean, who'd have thought, but I mean, it just, kind of goes to show you that uh ab you know absolute power corrupts absolutely in a sense and uh you know where there's a well there's a way uh with a government bribe to get through the system um always yep exactly uh well one of the areas that the atf covers the alcohol and tobacco Slash, you could also argue drugs portion of it um, factored into a UC Davis study recently. Um, it basically found that alcohol and drug offenses um, coincide with an increased suicide risk, um, which is it's kind of interesting. I mean, it's not the greater population at a whole. You know, there's no correlation between just alcohol consumption and firearms and suicide. But people who committed crimes who also have an alcohol problem are more likely to commit suicide per the uh, per the report, which is kind of interesting. I mean, speaking as a Gen Zer over here, um, yeah, people who drink a lot are more likely to be suicidal, and those two things can be correlated in either direction you prefer. Um, and I think I think this is pretty, yeah, pretty simple. Alcohol is a very common coping mechanism for depression, um, and then guns are a very common mechanism for suicide. When you have a country where the two of those things flow freely and widely, although not as freely and widely as they should, uh, of course, those two things will combine sometimes. I don't think you can blame the suicides on alcohol or firearms, but you can, I think, list them as contributing factors. Yeah, uh, definitely. And I mean, that's also kind of like why I'm excited about a guest that we are looking to book in the near future who kind of covers that intersection. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Uh, we have uh, been working with a, you know, kind of a, a firm that kind of specializes in uh, suicide prevention among the gun and population. So um, it'll be kind of cool when we have them on to discuss that topic. Yeah, I'd just like to note we have a lot of really cool guests lined up, and some we're scoping out and maybe begging them to answer our emails. Uh, but we've got some really cool people I think you'll enjoy conversations with uh, coming to the podcast soon. All right. Uh, speaking of skipping back a little bit speaking of useless government agencies tsa has been finding a lot of guns in baggage lately uh so they've caught 4495 firearms and security checkpoints so far this year which is a 20-year record uh haven't they only been around for 20 years i think so i mean well yeah, technically that, they, that was there was homeland security yeah i mean there was like general airport security and then they all got bundled under the tsa is like one administration yeah. I believe right so 
Yeah, it's pretty much, it's, uh, they found 11 guns per million passengers uh, in carry-on bags. The previous annual rec- annual record, so year-to-date, we have 4,400. The previous annual record was around 4,400. Um, so the rate was five per million. So I think this might just be new gun owners not knowing what they're supposed to do, or people being idiots. Uh, I don't know. I don't think that would be my guess. Attempting to, attempting to commit terrorism. I mean, that would be my guess, honestly, because it's like, you know, laws are confusing and you would think, you know, there there are honestly people that just like think, OK, I bought a gun. Obviously, I can conceal carry with, with me anywhere when that's not exactly the case. So that's uh, too much too much of that Texas thinking. Oh, I wish. Yeah. Be, uh, I mean, yeah, it makes logical sense uh, to think that a firearm you use could be carried anywhere. But uh, unfortunately, not the case in California, especially. Uh, yeah. So we have an entire government agency dedicated to keeping people from taking guns on planes. And they've caught about four and a half thousand incidents of this happening. Now, it seems we don't care about Asian people because there have been 9,000 anti-Asian incidents over, uh, since the pandemic began. And nobody nobody gives a shit. People are well, saying except they for do. us. Yeah, but we do. And Dion Lim, who, you know, but, shout out to Dion Lim. She's fabulous. At least she's, like, covering that on a regular basis on Twitter. So I mean, are, over, are overweight, underpaid people groping you because Asian, anti-Asian hate crimes exist? No. I'm not sure where I'm going with this, but... Uh, I'm not sure where you go with that either. But, I mean, I guess that could be considered as a hate crime if, uh, you know, someone got a little handsy at the TSA. Um, but yeah, these are these are real incidents uh, involving you know elderly Asian people mostly, especially in large cities with populations. Uh, I mean, it's according to the report, like most of them occurred in New York and uh, San Francisco Bay Area and Los Angeles. Which ding ding ding, that's the uh, the area where the highest population of uh, you know Asian folks uh, occurs. Um, and uh, it'd be lovely if we had Bobby and. Uh, Eugene here to comment on that. Uh, but uh, it looks like Bobby uh, and Eugene both had to leave. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's unfortunate, um, but also a big reason why we exist is uh, trying to help people understand their options when it comes to self-defense, especially in this demographic. Yeah, I, I, it's kind of funny how us, the two white guys, are always the last two here, but I think uh, it's just because we have no social lives and Bobby and Eugene do. Yeah, exactly. I mean, hey, case in point, that's what happens when you're married. I mean, it's like my dog's hanging out with me here, and then my wife and kid are downstairs. Uh, no cameos this week. Yeah, actually, you know, uh, I have exactly the same situation. Dog there, wife over there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. He's just like staring at me. It's like, I need to go for a walk. Uh, mm-hmm. But oh well. <laughs> uh, yeah, well he, he is a pug, the... though. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, for I was me. just going to say, yeah, exactly. Uh, yep. man. So, uh, in things that you wouldn't expect, uh, The View co-host Sherry Shepard just bought a gun. <laughs> nice. So is She's, she Megan uh, McCain's replacement or has she been on there for a while? I don't know. I don't watch The View. What do I look like? I, I haven't watched um, it since, uh, since Barbara Walters was on it, honestly. And like Lisa Ling, believe it or not, you know, was on it a while yeah. ago. But so she's like, okay, I actually really like this. Uh, I went to a black owned range and bought my gun and I feel really empowered by it. I'm just, I'm just like, yep, yep. And you're still going to vote to have it taken away because you're still. Uh huh. Yeah, exactly. <sighs> oh, I mean, it, it, it it's encouraging though. Cause I mean, that's like, I, honestly, this is probably the highest profile person I've seen like come out and admit they're a gun owner that isn't like a stereotypical Republican you would find on Fox News. So, I mean, it's mm-hmm. encouraging. Maybe it'll like give other people the courage to come out and admit that they own a gun now. Um, and gun ownership's changed in America, which is, you know, again, kind of what we're all about. I mean, seizing the means of self-defense is important, and this is also a trend that's happening worldwide. So, um, Boris Johnson, actually, uh, has recently been going off about the police's failure to protect women from violent crime. Mm-hmm. I can't do Boris Johnson's accent, uh, because it's it's not a very good British accent. Uh, but 
he uh, he basically got really pissed off at the UK police and their complete inability to do anything. So he quoted a couple of statistics. Uh, one woman is killed by a man on average every three days in the UK, according to data from the femicide census. And far too many women are basically finding their lives lost to this system, waiting for their complaint to be taken seriously, waiting for their case to be heard, and nothing is happening. Uh, it's too bad they can't have guns there. Otherwise, this could be a lot less of a problem. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there's like, I mean, I think they also ban tasers and like any other means of really realistically defending yourself. Like maybe pepper spray is legal, but that kind of doesn't do much. It's not legal in the UK. The only place it's legal to own a handgun in the entire United Kingdom is Northern Ireland. Uh, that, I mean, it's just ridiculous. It's like, what, what do they expect women to do? Honestly, it's like, can't carry a knife, can't carry pepper spray, can't carry a taser and, you know, let alone a handgun which could actually equalize the situation. And they have a pretty big problem from what uh, the statistics were saying in that article. You know, I feel like the UK has an opportunity here. They really don't have that many illegal guns in circulation yet. Uh, 3D printing will likely change that. Um, but, I mean, if they wanted to actually protect people, what they could do is start granting concealed carry licenses, uh, distribute the handguns only to people who have those, keep track of them and anybody who actually uses them it'll be known about and you'll probably know who did it so if it's really such a big public threat do a trial period of a year um people who have a documented need and i'm just using like the the harshest of the u.s states criteria um because i'm sure that's still too lax for the uk but still give it a shot see what happens to your crime rate i bet it'll go down yeah well, it's interesting because I actually saw something on Twitter the other day. Uh, it was like from Devonshire, which I have no idea, UK provinces, whatever. But it was literally a musket that looked like it was circa, you know, dueling pistols, 1700s. And it was a police report saying we recovered this firearm from the home of a suspected money launderer. And it's like, that's all you got? <laughs> it's like that difficult to actually get a it was a flintlock. Yeah. Um, it's literally just a, a single shot black powder pistol. Something that's not even legally considered a firearm in the U.S., of course. Yeah. It's an arrestable offense there. Yeah, um, it's, it's interesting, though. Because, I mean, it's like, that. that's the thing that people always, like, to me anyway, like, not factoring into the overall gun ownership rates is, like, they're literally curios and relics guns from seven you know a hundred years ago that are still fireball and those aren't really counted in the statistics so even if you took every well, handgun I mean, can... away you could still get like the gun that shot abraham lincoln up and running to be used uh pretty easily because yeah. it's just steel and I mean, mechanical if you parts actually wanted to if you wanted to make a functional firearm uh quickly and easily black powder not smokeless powder is really easy to mix you can get a pipe a drill and some matches and have a firearm that works. Um, but yeah, you, I mean, if you're a felon in the U S in many States, it's legal. Uh, if you want to defend yourself with firepower, but you can't buy a gun for obvious reasons, you can get a black powder revolver, um, and legally own and shoot it. Um, and like, that's, it's not legal everywhere. There are some States that also restrict black powder firearm ownership. Um, but like, they're so old fashioned to us that we don't really think of them as dangerous weapons anymore. Yeah. <laughs> and it's true. Uh, the UK is just, they're just behind the times. It's okay, but they should really catch up. Yeah, for sure. Uh, well, speaking, speaking of illegal of... gun modifications. Yes. Right? That, that, that was, that was, no. that was kind of what I was going for segue wise. So yeah, just roll okay. with it. Yeah, cool. So, um, apparently people are building full autos in Minneapolis. So, uh, they're probably just twisting up coat hangers or 3D printing some little doodads, but, um, there have been 78 incidents of fully automatic gunfire this year alone. Minneapolis. I never saw that happening there. Have you ever been? No, I, I, I've never been in like, actually up until, I mean, I'm sorry if this sounds callous, but like, I, I, you know, up until the George Floyd incident, I just pictured it as like this, you know, quaint, you know, Midwestern place where everyone talks like they're from Fargo. Um, 
And I didn't realize like it actually had like an urban component or you um, know Minneapolis city is atmosphere. actually a, it's a pretty big city. Um I've been. It's uh not the kind of place you'd imagine there were seventy eight incidents of fully automatic gunfire this year. Yeah. Alone, um the article actually has some uh misstatements and owning a fully only owning a fully automatic gun is not illegal under federal law it's simply restricted and uh not uh, well only licensed firearm dealers can effectively possess an auto sear but if you had a not pre-86 registered auto sear you could own that yeah um the minnesota Western california Caucus, basically uh, their their director doesn't didn't get his laws quite right or he was misquoted yeah. Uh, but basically, is this just like Colorado and weed? Uh, are they just nullifying it? Yeah, I mean, it sounds like yeah. it to me. Um, I, yeah, I mean, it, it, it is interesting. Like, I mean, were they talking about just like semi-autos that were converted to fully automatic? Like, I didn't quite get what they were talking about in the article. Well, <clears throat> I'd assume they can't. Uh, uh, fully automatic gunfire, I believe, uh, I would assume, their shot spotters uh, detected full auto. Um, and that could be one person shooting 78 times. It could be somebody bump firing. It could be a lot of things. I'd assume that some of yeah. those, at least, are full auto conversions. Um, but it's just interesting. I mean, if yeah. their homicide rate didn't go up, but there were 78 incidents of fully automatic gunfire versus previous years, I mean then it would be strong evidence that full auto seems to not be any more fatal. Well, I mean, plus, like, every time I've ever shot full auto, it seems like it's more of a detriment to the user than anyone on the receiving end. I mean, like, it just seems super inaccurate to me. At so least, like, shooting an time, Uzi. There's a place in a time for full auto, and none of them are when, while shooting an Uzi. Uzis are just kind of, like, spray and pray. So full auto is generally used for suppressing fire. You have somebody in cover, they can't shoot at you, and you want to keep them there. You just oh, dump, right. some, some, dump some ammo in their direction to keep them there. The real danger is select fire. Select fire is actually kind of scary. Three round burst, uh, and in some rifles, they even have a recoil like buffering system to keep all three shots on target. Uh, so it's, it's pretty cool, um, but honestly, you should be a lot more scared of people using like a, a burst fire instead of a full auto because full auto is hard to control hard to be accurate with um burst fire is not and burst fire is pretty pretty scary yeah <laughs> exactly um well on the subject of states and where one might go if they were just satisfied with the laws of their state um, Smith and Wesson decided to relocate their HQ to Tennessee by 2023. So good news for you if you, uh, if you make the move there by then. Yeah. Um, so basically what's going on is Massachusetts is trying to ban certain types of manufacture uh, of guns, uh, either being sold or manufactured in the state. And Massachusetts, of course, would, would do that. They're the types of people who would, uh, they have worse gun laws than New York or California combined. Uh, but basically, they're trying to ban assault weapons uh, being manufactured in the state. So Smith & Wesson's like, well, we sell a lot of modern sporting rifles. We're going to get out while the getting's good. Uh, so they will yeah. be moving their headquarters, distribution, assembly, and plastic injection molding operations to Tennessee. It'll, it creates, it'll create at least 750 new jobs. Tennessee's super hyped about this, obviously. And uh, it looks like Tennessee's the place to be in the coming few years, few decades. We'll see. Uh, yeah. They've been in Springfield, Massachusetts since 1852. They're a very old company. They do some cool stuff. And uh, get a shield easy if you're new to guns. Yeah, for sure. Well, I mean, uh, you know, just anecdotally, like, I, I have to wonder, like, how popular the M&P 15 must be, you know, Considering it's like one of the only manu like well known manufacturers making AR fifteens and you know, it's a pretty good starter gun unless you're, you know, into building your own. Um I mean I think it's like what else do you have? You like Springfield makes their own AR kit and Colt and a couple of others, but Smith and Wesson seems to just sell out every time I, I look for those. So I'm kinda I'm I would be generally curious to get stats on that if anybody knows, like how popular is the M and P fifteen series. 
Yeah, um, as far as I know, it's very popular. Uh, the uh, Smith and Wesson sells well. Uh, that's a known fact. They're one of the oldest names in in guns. Uh, I think I think Remington was older, but they uh, went bankrupt. Yeah, but yeah, they're uh, the, the Massachusetts fucked around and found out. That's just what happens. Excuse me, I punched my microphone. No, no, uh, but yeah, that's uh, that's just that you're losing jobs, you're losing business, because and you're losing tax revenue because you're assholes, and uh, that's just <laughs> what happens. Keep going, let's go. Yeah, I All know. Right. By the day, I'm tempted to leave California. I mean, speaking of good, solid job creators, Tesla announced uh, not gun related, but you know, just. Near and dear to our heart related because we own flamethrower related. Flamethrower related. Uh yeah, they announced they're packing up and uh moving away from Fremont, California, right down the street from us, uh to uh to Texas. Very, very cool. They also had a big Texas Tesla crossover belt buckle uh made for a couple of board members. I was pretty pretty hyped about that. They have a new seal which is don't mess with and then uh Tesla smack in the middle of the Texas flag. Nice. It's pretty cool. Yeah. That is pretty cool. I mean, I feel like that would be the type of belt buckle that actually would go for a, you know, go well with a revolver on your belt as well. Yeah. I feel like in most Teslas, you want to keep some kind of gun by FN or maybe Caltech just because weird futuristic. Um, but, you know, get a Cybertruck, get a lever gun. Well, I'm, I, I'm, I would be curious to get a lawyer's perspective on this because it's like technically, at least in many states, you can have a gun in a locked container in your car and the glove box in the Tesla is locked by default. Uh, I wonder if you could potentially use that. It depends on the state. Um, yeah. But I mean, I wouldn't in California or New York. Oh, God, no. Uh, yeah. But in but Tennessee. Even that in the trunk, right. but... In Tennessee, if you have a gun on you, even no matter the age, uh, you can keep it anywhere on your person or in the car while in the car uh, perfectly legally. It's very cool. Very cool. Well, um, speaking of cool, um, I think we're we're all done with news for this week, so might as well wrap it up unless you had any uh, weird guns of the week to uh, consider. Nothing worth talking about this week. I had a yeah. feeling this was going to happen. We were going to run out of guns. Yeah, pretty much. But, you know, hey, if you're listening and this live stream actually work, feel free to let us know any uh, weird gun suggestions you might have for future episodes. And uh, The live stream didn't work. I just checked. Oh, you just checked? Okay, I'll have to figure that out then. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's okay. uh, R- Riverside. We'll figure out how that works. Um, but anyway, uh, you know, thanks for joining us this week. It's, uh, you know, October 14th. And uh, just as a reminder, if you want to help us out, uh, please give us a thumbs up and uh, subscribe on YouTube. And uh, if you're listening to the audio version, um, definitely review us on iTunes. We really appreciate that. Um, and in fact, um, you know, we have a running thing where if you... If we get up to 100 reviews, uh, you'll be entered into a drawing where you can get uh, some free uh, AR-15 accessories. So definitely factor that in. Um, We're almost there, but not quite. So any review you can provide uh, definitely helps us out. And, uh, you know, be sure to stay tuned uh, for more information on our November 13th event that's coming up here in uh, San Jose in a couple of weeks. Um, It's new shooter oriented. uh, So... If you are new to the hobby, uh, there and uh, we'll have uh, certified NRA instructors to help you out uh, with you know basics of firearms, and uh, you'll get to demo um, a lot of cool stuff, including uh, my PS90, which I will be bringing if I can find ammo. So enjoy that. But other than that, uh, this has been the AAPI GoCast, and uh, we'll see you next time.